So, and the game you were talking about, uh, the Friday night game against the Bucks, D'Angelo went off. Yeah. Right. He he was terrific. And they benched him. Was it against the Bucks again? Not the Bucks. The uh, Nuggets, where they benched him again, what, a week or so ago? Yeah. So, that Saturday game, about 7.45 left to go. Yeah. They sat him for about six minutes. I, I get that he was borderline unplayable in the playoffs last year. He, he just was. Mm-hmm. He wasn't making shots, and he's not a good defender. So, you know, that leads to we can't use you. Yep. You're in the playoffs, right? So you, you don't have a choice, right? So. Mm-hmm. He's been so good for them of late, and and he's still not a great defender, mm-hmm. but he's one of those, and especially with LeBron, I don't want to say off and on because he's not off and on, but it just he's the third guy that you can. I don't want to say you can count on him every night, but it feels like he's found this little groove of consistency over the last six or eight weeks that. I don't know if I've seen in his game in his entire NBA career, and he's been in the league for a while. Okay, let, let me let, let's go back because I, I think telling D'Angelo Russell's story this year is an important story. I think it's actually one of the more interesting stories in the entire NBA. Hmm. I'm sure there are guys that you and I were not watching every single night, and some guy, it's Jalen Williams from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh my gosh, look what he's done! Look where the Thunder is sitting. Put that to the side for Losing a second. Losing to the Lakers is what they're Losing doing. Losing to the Lakers. But Repeatedly. 45 wins or whatever yeah. they have, right? Um, D'Angelo Russell had a stage in, in his season that I thought was probably going to be the defining moment of his career. He got benched by the Lakers in December. That the Lakers, think about D'Lo. You can't use him in the playoffs. You re-sign him and all the question marks of immediately when you re-signed him, it's like, okay, cool, they re-signed him so they could trade him. The season starts, you're already talking about Zach Levine, you're already talking about DeJounte Murray, all sure. these other players, and then you go through a moment where Delos taken out of the starting lineup of the Lakers. I thought that was a critical, critical moment. It felt like moment. it was just a matter of time. Just a matter of time, of yeah. course. And oh, by the way, trade deadline was going to come up and everything else. He had a game, and I've heard Darvin Ham talk about this. January 13th, they played the Utah Jazz at Utah. LeBron, I don't think, played in that game. And he had a 39-point performance. Lakers lost the game, but he had 39 points. Since January 13th, I don't know how many games it's been this year, but there's been a lot of games where he's led the Lakers in scoring. Sure. Okay, a handful. I don't, I don't want to overreact when you have LeBron in AD. He's had a lot of games or a handful of games where he led the team in assists. Friday night against Milwaukee, they lose that game by 20 if D'Angelo Russell's not there. I'm telling you, they do. he was 9 of 12 from the three-point line. He had nine assists on top of his 44 points. And I have not been one that's been a proponent of D'Angelo Russell, but I'm also one to give credit where credit's due. He's, in a sense, saved the Lakers' season up to this point. I know they're a ninth seed. I know there there's nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. But nobody expected him to be this good for this amount of time. It's been about two months he's been really good. They needed somebody to step up and be a consistent performer. And, and I think the best thing that you can say about him over the last two months, like you're talking about, there have not been frequent occasions. It happens to everybody, but it used to happen to him as often as it didn't, which was, hey, he's killing them. He's got to come out of the game. He's killing them with his decision making. He's killing them with his shot selection. He's killing them he with defensively. And it's just like tonight's not his night. Get him out of there. It was almost like okay, is he making? Okay, cool. He's making buckets. Leave him out there. Mm-hmm. And th- he's not making buckets. Okay, s- sit him down over there. We're done with him for tonight. He, it hasn't been that. He's rarely been the guy that factors in negatively, and he's almost never the guy that gives you nothing offensively. He's really been a consistent performer over the last, and without being a huge drag defensively more often than not. I know he's not a great defender. I know that that's not what has him in the league, but he is far more valuable than he is a liability far more often. That has never been the case for him. It's almost like a one for one good night, bad night, good night, bad night. Now it's three or four or five pretty good nights, one eh. And then right back to four or five good ones. That's a really good NBA player. Do you, do you remember when Darvin Ham had a moment where it was pretty early in the season? I think this is part of the reason why I pulled D'Lo out of the starting lineup. They said that they need an identity, and their identity was going to be on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this has also kind of helped change things. Their identity is no longer defense. No, it's not. It's they're, not. they're basically saying, we're going to try to outscore teams. And I think well, what it's, that's it's, done— it's, it's AD and Vanderbilt. That's about it. And LeBron occasionally— Okay, and Vando hasn't been around. Right. Um, even guys like Cam Reddish, he hasn't been around. Even Gabe Vincent, who's— hasn't played. He's played five games, but yeah. he's kind of a hard-nosed defender. I'm a pickup guy. So their defensive players aren't there. The fact that they said, 
F defense, and I think D'Lo's done a little bit of this as well. You want to pull me out of the game? Go ahead and pull me out of the game. I'm going to play ball, and it, and it, I'm going to go down either by the shots that I'm taking, the assists that I'm making. If turnovers come with it, turnovers come with it, even though he hasn't been committing that many turnovers. I think also the way the Lakers are playing because it's up pace, go ahead and shoot. It's kind of unlocked something for D'Lo. You see the wild card? That they're going to go – look, AD and LeBron are going to be AD and LeBron because – they're six games over 500, which, believe it or not, that's the first time they've been six games over 500 in nearly three calendar years. Since that's just magic cr- and Kareem. It, it feels like it. So it is what it is. But LeBron and AD firing mm-hmm. on mostly all cylinders for this season has resulted in roughly a 500 team, right? Especially over the last couple of years. They're, I think they're a couple of games over 500 over the course of the last three seasons, something like that. D'Angelo is the one that feels like can, when he's on, we're going to kick it up a little bit. That AD and LeBron are going to do what they do. That he's kind of the X factor in all of this. That if D'Lo re- has a night, they're going to win the game. They, they, and they mm-hmm. got a chance to beat some pretty good teams if he can do AD's got to be great. LeBron's got to be great. But you're going to need that third guy. And it feels like he's been the third guy far more often than anybody is else. Is it because he's the most variable? Because I feel like we know what we're going to get from AD and LeBron every night. We're going to kind of get the same performance, that he is the most up and down. I, I think the difference Maybe. is, I, I don't know if it's that. I think he literally has the ability, like Austin Reeves is going to be probably more steady. Like, I, I don't think there's going to be a great high and a great low from Reeves. I kind of have an idea. Not too many guys can drop 44 on a night or yeah, 35 in a night, and they're the third best player on your team. Right. Right? So I think that's what... I think that's what it does. And on top of it, you know, something I don't think we give D'Lo enough credit uh, credit for, he's not necessarily I want to score. He also is completely okay with 9, 10, 11 assists if he has the ability to do it. So there is a he, – he's got it, – it's he's got a couple weapons, right? It's not just one weapon. I only know D'Angelo Russell is this. He's got the ability to also facilitate. I'm really curious to what it's going to look like when Vanderbilt comes back, if he can come back, because they don't defend at all. You know what will happen? It's really hard because yeah. to, to think about, and we'll just use Denver as the example, because that's ultimately somebody's going to have to beat them. You're going to have to defend them as best you can. They have too many guys that can do it. And the Lakers, Jokic kind of seems to have his way with AD, and he's their best defender. Mm-hmm. So you can, I guess you could put him on Aaron Gordon or Michael Porter or something to try to neutralize some of that. But Jokic and Murray are going to be able to do whatever they want. That's Reeves is a bad defender. D'Angelo's not a great defender. LeBron picks his spots at best. AD's pretty good. And then you're kind of going to get whichever you get yeah. out of that fifth spot. There's just not very much defense on that team. I don't know, and they probably wouldn't change their starting lineup at this point because Rui's been there. But in an ideal world, Vando could come in. As a starter, which I don't think is going to happen, they don't have a bench anymore. Yeah, they get no help from the bench. So, listen, it's not where they're sitting today is not perfect. And I'd be the first to tell you if they make the playoffs, I wouldn't be shocked at all if they're eliminated in the first round. But I, I think it at least presents the story and the conversation of this is looking a little bit like it did last year, where they're going on a run towards the end of the season. And I know that Bill Simmons has brought this up um, on his podcast throughout the season, but I think all the great teams, at least nowadays in this version of the NBA, is that they all have some guy that can go off, and that more often than not, this guy can go off and score them points. And because this league, they're everyone's scoring so many points now, all these leads can Dilo's go away kinda that guy. in a second. Yeah, and that mm-hmm. finally, Delo has turned into that version of himself that could be that for the Lakers, because I think that. Like you said, he could be the person that takes them over the top. That can have those if it's three out of. He could be the four. guy that sinks them too. Well, I, yeah. wait, 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 I was gonna say, and I, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I still have no. This team, like I said, they can they can go Wednesday. They play Sacramento. Sacramento, they get punched in the face, and none of us would even. You know, it's funny, it. Al. It, it, you, yes, the regulars. It just doesn't matter. It, it just you know, I, I get it that a there's too many games, too many games in baseball. There's too many games in in the NBA. Because guys are sitting out, guys get hurt, guys take nights off, guys, the, the effort level is not consistent. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah. That It's really hard to draw any conclusions from the regular season. You almost have to go, okay, what have they done in the playoffs previously? What yep. have they do? What do they do really well? How does that do against what this other team does really well? Like, we know what the Bucks are going to try to do. We know what the, the, the Nuggets and the Lakers are going to try to do. Trying to figure out what's happening leading up to it, I don't know. It's just the, the NBA regular season is so all over the map. I don't put a ton, especially a team like the Lakers, who could be out before they even get a playoff series. 
or they could make another run. Mm-hmm. I, it just they're impossible to try to put your finger on. Yeah, I, I it, it's a fair way to put it. And you go look at the Western Conference. You said a little bit earlier today, any team's got a shot as long as you're not counting the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, that you're taking the Nuggets off the board. Yeah. Sure, yeah. It, it's the Nuggets and the Celtics, maybe the Bucks, but the Bucks, I don't know. No, I, I'm. I'm Watching them on Friday, they didn't look impressive at all. No, the, the, very... the Nuggets and the, the Celtics are the two best teams comfortably. And if something weird would have to happen, and, you know, nobody wants an injury, but that can swing it one way or the other, that's what it feels like.